Hello and welcome to Art Show. I'm Craig Stover and today I have with me Mitch Gillette. Hi Mitch, how are you today? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Very good. I'm excited to share some work of yours with our audience. Um, I first came across your work uh, years ago uh, when I was working on some exhibition and I think it was kind of like in the middle of your Tales of the Buffoon uh, series. Mm -hmm. This is like in the early 90s. So anyway, I went to your website, I selected a bunch of pieces, and I would like you to talk to it a little bit. What what exactly am I looking at here? You are looking at uh, a page from my uh, graphic novel slash art book mm -hmm. um, entitled Tales of the Buffoon. Um, it's a 324-page book. Uh, I'm in, I'm very close to self-publishing it. Uh, I think I'm about maybe four or five months away. All right. Um, I've been working on it for over twenty years at this point. All right, all right. I look forward to to when that actually comes out. So I've seen several of the of the the pages of this. This one in particular, I just. I loved it's it's got so much going on uh with this um can you tell me how first off I, I was curious to know what am I looking at how is this made is this just drawing or is this with printing uh it's a little more complicated than that um it uh is well the process is I I um I wrote a script okay I, uh storyboarded it with little thumbnail sketches and then I did um, uh, uh, semi-detailed pencil drawings, uh, realizing the image and organizing the text. This particular page does not have text. I um, I tried doesn't to, need it, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I tried to use a, as little text as possible, and um, it the text only appears below or above or around the image. There are no speech balloons there's no uh, uh speaking in it it's just a narration um and so then the uh the pencil drawings um originally i wanted to do them in pen and ink and mm -hmm. very quickly realized that uh if i had done that I, it would probably taken me 40 years rather than 20 <laughs> um because i'm a messy artist and i make a lot of mistakes uh -huh. um, so the uh, drawings were then scanned into uh, the computer okay. and then with Photoshop, um, uh, with a special uh, line uh, line work that I that, that I actually created to make look like it was pen and ink, you close up, there's a little rough edge to it. Mm -hmm. um, then I uh, um, added line and then cross hatching and then solid color and then shading and then lighting effects so, so this only this only exists as a digital image that's correct okay yeah. you know i was curious I, I figured it was some sort of either a printing or computer because of the gradation that you do and it, like the uh the house exploding you know how it goes from the yellow to the orange was really nice i was like how did he do that kind of a thing but I, yeah. I chose this piece because of the really the your, your ability to tell a story within an image without words. And I loved this particular piece because it, it brings up so many questions more than answers. <laughs> it just really it's it sort of sucks me in. And a lot of your work kind of does that. Um, so I came upon this particular piece and you have several works, so many that you have a whole section on your site of just ballpoint pen, correct? That's right. That's right. Um, I tend to work in groups. Um, okay. And quite often in the groups, uh, I will change uh, uh, the the medium completely. Um, uh, if, if I don't have challenges in front of me, mm -hmm. ones, then I get bored very quickly. And, and that's dangerous for me. <laughs> uh, like a lot of artists. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, I wanted to do some, some ballpoint uh uh pieces and um in fact did a 
uh, a whole, uh, I had an entire exhibition that was just ballpoint, ballpoint pen. Um, I, it gave me the worst carpal tunnel <laughs> <laughs> for so long. Uh -huh. It took forever to shake that. But that the constant, you know, repetition of the line. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, a ballpoint pen doesn't give uh, yeah. like a like a, a brush or a, a felt pen or anything like that. Um, so it was hard against hard um, and days of uh, just making little lines over. Yep, over yep. Yeah. Scritch, little scritch marks. How big is this piece? Um, Roughly. I, I don't know offhand. It's it's about um, maybe two foot, two and a half foot high. Okay. Um, it was one of the bigger pieces. Uh, yeah. Also, it's rather piece, ambitious. Yeah, I, I like to work big. Um, um, also, with that piece, uh, the right. paper is collaged. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the oh it's. Oh, there are sections on this that are collaged together. Right. The audience is uh, uh, is the closest piece cut mm -hmm. out, and okay. then um, the curtains and that's the only one of the of that series that I actually did that. I wanted to give it just a tiny bit of dimension. Okay. So speaking speaking of size, this this particular painting, um, this is much larger, correct? It's quite large. Yes. Yeah. For me, that I, when I saw this particular painting, uh, and I assume this is this is paint on canvas, oil on canvas. That's correct. Oil on canvas. It yeah. had. Uh, it reminded me of uh, Max Beckman, of his his like uh, those early night scenes that he did in the nineteen thirties. Uh huh. Um, I love the the quality of light in this, and then again, of course, there's the storyline. Is is there a, a specific story that that made you make this? Yes, this is from the beginning of my involvement with the buffoon subject. Okay. Um, uh, if I can capsulize this quickly, um, many, 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 many years ago, I was affiliated with a, a small um, uh, sort of offbeat gallery um, called Studio Diabolique, which was on Pine I Street. I remember. Yeah. And um, they uh, they had a sort of similar um, inspira inspiration of you know, people, uh, you know, artists that inspired them as myself and some other artists that were involved um, with the gallery. And at one point they they said, uh, would you um, would you do a comic strip for a magazine we're going to put out? Mm. So um, I thought, sure, I'll, I'll try to come up with something. And at the time. I was really involved with researching the Ballet Russe. Mm. And um, there, and I was constantly scouring record shops for um, ballet music that was uh, out of fashion and never played anymore. And um, uh, everything from the Rite of Spring, Stravinsky, to uh, really obscure things. Uh, such as uh, a Prokofiev uh, ballet based on a, a, a Russian folktale, mm -hmm. um, which is about a buffoon who mm -hmm. constantly... And that's where this all sort of came about? It's where it all came about. Wow. Um, and it's, you know, roughly a, a people cheating each other. Yeah. Uh, it was episodic. And it was rough. It was rough and um, <laughs> and satirical and mean, and I liked I liked the message. Yeah, well, it's a great. So, so you know, artists are always looking for fantastic stories to to latch onto, and I love yeah. how you talk. As soon as you said ballet, it changed the nature of this picture for me. Mm -hmm. Right, so now I do see these all as as dancers. So I, one quick question before I go on this this particular picture: Is the frame painted, or is that a real frame on? It is painted. I did that for quite a while, um, uh, partially out of um, lack of funds, um, <laughs> but also I. A lot of my work is in quotes. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to you. Yeah, and I, I thought that the frame kind of supported that idea. Mm -hmm. um, 
that this is uh um we're looking into something uh that's different um that's uh maybe even a mirror yeah um but it it it, it creates sort of a narrative framework for me and 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 a symbolic one as well so i did that for a very long time well speaking of something different um i remember this piece from a while ago uh this particular this is also oil on canvas it is yeah so you know the the Cherko, you know reference to mm -hmm. this 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 structure is obviously there but there's got there's more in this this is a real mystery for me um yeah you know, if I, you know do, do other people do it so I've got a, like a million questions about this painting and it requires me to really look at it a long time but what is what's with the wording in the on the on the left hand side there what is it field yes um well I grew up in a town called Springfield Vermont. okay all right and um so this was a very personal painting okay um, and um there is a uh there's a lot to there's a lot to sort of talk about with this group. Yeah, this is a whole interview in itself, just with this picture. It is. So is this, would you consider that this picture like autobiographical? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It also is uh, very indicative of, of uh, uh, some uh, um, emotional things I was going through at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I do suffer from... Uh, quite a few mental illnesses <laughs> and I was plunging. I was plunging when I uh, did these paintings. Um, I, uh, I was showing at Snyderman gallery mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. regularly. And yep. um, I suddenly just plunged and I thought, what, what am I doing? Uh, what, you know, I, I really questioned all of my work and I threw everything out mm. and I, um, I'm basically a figure painter, a narrative figure painter. And I thought I have to change everything. So mm -hmm. I took all the figures out of my work and just mm. did these cutouts. Um, and I, at the time, this is so embarrassing, but at the, at the time I, I, I was late to create the work for this one person show and all of these paintings, I thought, well, I'm going to go back to, um, a very early practice of working from a black ground mm, mm -hmm. and um so i did i created all these paintings and um maybe a third of them when it was time to deliver the paintings to the gallery <laughs> uh, when i removed them from beneath the spotlights in my studio some of them disappeared and oh. i thought oh my god <laughs> it, was, it was a real sort of kind of horrible watershed moment. Yeah. Uh, this was one of the better ones. Um, okay. It does not disappear. Um, but uh, it's funny looking. Uh, and for years, I completely discounted this whole group of work. Um, and uh, it was only recently I, I examined them again and and was able to recognize how accurately mm -hmm. they were depicting uh falling into a, a deep depression mm -hmm. a so darkness. how much of that was your your subconscious coming through you think almost all of it <laughs> i think so uh yeah. seem to be able th that seems to rule a lot of my work is this sort of subconscious s stuff i don't i've always made it a practice not to examine my work when i'm working on it mm -hmm. and uh another weird thing uh many years before this um i i was looking at some of my work thinking i wonder what this means and <laughs> I, <laughs> that's good that's a good thing <laughs> that is a good thing but i thought i recognized some symbolism that i hadn't purposely put there yeah so I thought I, you know, and I've always been interested in archetypes and certainly the buffoon is yeah. an archetype. He's the trickster. Of course. Um, but um, I thought, I wonder if I just open my mind when I'm creating a narrative 
work and just let things in if they're if I'm letting in actual archetypes or not. Right. So I did that for years and years, um, not knowing if it was working or not. Um, That's what I like about your work, you know, because it's not. It, it comes from you and it's and it's only your work right so it's it's got the narrative but it's that i mean that's the kind of work that i'm drawn to anyway you know when people can use their own backgrounds imagination creativity to make work that's original i mean especially nowadays i think there's so much work that's so so repetitive and derivative so I, that's, that's why i really like your work so let me let's start at the very beginning sure. uh, i'm curious to know uh when you were younger did you ever have an aha moment uh, as an introduction to the arts? Was there anything that you, you know, were exposed to that sort of shook you? There were, there were three. I think most of my uh, artistic training came as a child. Mm -hmm. um, I had an uncle, Linwood, who had a three-volume cartooning course hmm. which i he I, he let me borrow over and over and over again and it um strangely uh emphasized realistic anatomy and movement hmm. and i studied it and studied it and studied it and then maybe even more uh um important i became obsessed with superman Okay. <laughs> and uh, two artists in particular, uh, Kurt Schaffenberg and Kurt Swan, who drew Superman and Lois Lane. Mm. And um, their their anatomy is just so elegant. If you ever get a chance to look at those two artists. Well, now I can't not but, see it in your work. <laughs> I, well, it's, uh, it's totally there. Yeah, yeah. I copied them over and over again. And then the third one was painting. Um, I grew up in Vermont and nearby was Cornish, New Hampshire, okay. where Augustus St. Gaudens and Maxwell Parish, mm -hmm. had, um, a little bit of an artist colony mm -hmm. uh, as, as successful artists. And, uh, one day my mother took me to, to Maxfield Parish's estate and in his studio was, um, an unfinished landscape. And uh, I know that he's always thought of as these, you know, the sort of commercial girls on rocks kind of thing, which he hated. Mm -hmm. It's landscapes. Mm -hmm. Just knock you dead. I mean, yeah. they are top notch painting. And to see how he built a painting, especially his famous blues, mm -hmm. he would actually varnish the white canvas. Oh. And then glaze over that for his blues for his water or his skies and then everything else was painted directly on the canvas and i thought that's how you make a painting that's fantastic Just all fell together <laughs> um and with those three things um i was not a real good i was not a real good student for art school uh i had trouble i had trouble fitting in mm -hmm. and i just it I bucked the whole thing. It was really yeah. difficult for me. Mm -hmm. But those three things, and then just drawing the figure over and over again, um, and studying my favorite painters, who were all uh, very much not in style when I was uh -huh. old. <laughs> oh, yeah, but that, yeah. That, that goes by the wayside. So I'm curious about your your the spark for your creativity. So I, I understand that you've been working on buffoon for a long time, but I also see works that aren't always associated with that. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of curious about your process. Say you're in the studio, you're going to make something new. What is it that gets you moving in the studio? Is it, you know, some artists will say, well, I, I need to take a walk. Some will say, I, I need to reference literature or something. Is there something that really sort of get you moving well i think sometimes it is literature um i know mythology has uh, has um made a big impact I've, I've done a lot of mythological uh works um is it greek norse or greek and roman roman yeah um 
mostly, um, mostly sometimes, sometimes I'll veer off a little bit. Um, but uh, I am, um, I'm a storyteller. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's no greater stories than those. Are all the stories that you work with, do they, do they always come from somewhere else? Or how is there a percentage that's your own story that of oh, your own creativity story there is there is and i'm not sure how those come about okay <laughs> um, they tend to be more serious a little bit more on the serious side right. um they're definitely uh narrative uh symbolic mm -hmm. elements i don't always know what they're adding up to well um, maybe in 20 years you'll figure that out I might, yeah, it takes me a while. <laughs> it really does take me a while. Right. Do you keep a sketchbook? Do you, are you, are you a constant sketcher? Um, I wish I was. Um, okay. One of my dearest friends um, is a, a magnificent sketchbook artist. I mean, he just fills them and sells them. They're gorgeous. <laughs> and I, I have always wished I were that way, but um, I'm not. I do, I do do a lot of, uh preparation um mm -hmm. there is a rough sketch then there's a okay. finer sketch then there's a bigger one and then there's a color study all right but even for just um uh finished drawings um because i've always i've always considered uh um a, a finished drawings and i and mine are largish um mm -hmm. as just as important as a as a painting i don't i don't yeah. make any sort of well, with these with these multi step processes to make an image, do you ever get to a point where you either scrap an image or have to, you know, redo it entirely? Did you get to that point? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah there's okay. a lot of stuff that I'll go, ugh, that's terrible, and um, you know, go on to something else, and then. Do you have a burn pile, or is it is it? Do you reuse pieces? I I have I have okay. I do hang on to almost everything except that which embarrasses me completely <laughs> uh, well that's a whole exhibit in itself that's yeah it that's is. the show i want to see <laughs> it is it is um but i i do try to hang on to things because well like you mentioned it you know 10 years down the line you look at it and you say well maybe not so bad maybe right you know, yeah you know. sometimes you just got to come around to it one of the questions I wanted to ask you was actually about dreaming. I was curious to know if you use dreaming at all as a either springboard or a reference in your works or anything like that. In a roundabout way, yes. Um, I, um, many years ago, curated uh, an exhibition at Nexus in Philly mm -hmm. on dream imagery. And... Um, it, the reason I chose that was because I was um, uh, so much interested in archetypes and how they enter, you know, how, how they could enter an artist without the artist being sp specifically uh, conscious of it. And um, one of the things I, I did a great deal of writing, I, 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 a reading, and I, I wrote an essay, and uh, uh, and maybe this is common knowledge, but I did not know, but uh, the um, the closest waking state to uh, the sleeping REM mm -hmm. uh, 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 state of the mind is creating art. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, one of the is absorbed. One, one of the questions I ask artists is, "What do you think about when you're making artwork?" and the you know, there was a majority of them. They couldn't answer like nothing. I think about nothing. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, it's it. like a trance. You get, a kind of, you get in a kind of a zone. Yeah, and and things and things come to you. Yeah, uh, the capper to that. Um, uh, uh, talking about archetypes and wondering whether I was channeling them or not is um, a, a recent visit to my therapist, where I told him that story about I wonder if I'm channeling archetypes. And he said, I've been waiting for you to say that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh -huh. he, has he has brought my work to a Jungian specialist and they're mm -hmm. studying it. So apparently it's, it works. 
Right. <laughs> I was very shocked to hear that. One of the questions or one of the things that you had talked about earlier is you, you said you work in groups. Um, oftentimes, most artists will, will talk about series, but groups is a different word than series. So I'm, 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 I'm kind of curious, do these groups that you're working on, do you work on one at a time or are they or do they overlap? Um, it depends on how much energy I have. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, uh, I'll switch mediums. Uh, I will, uh, you know, uh, uh, collaborate with a choreographer and a composer mm -hmm. because I wanted to emulate the, the Russian ballet. There was a Tales of the Buffoon dance piece at the Painted Bride. Um, and um, recently I rediscovered uh, music that I had written mm -hmm. um, that I had thrown out or almost thrown out many many times and apparently is uh not as um worthless as i thought it was <laughs> right recently uh um recorded um and then um uh I i've done a lot of um digital collage mm -hmm. um and i can and uh, some writing so it all kind of Sometimes I can, I, I feel most productive when I'm working on a, a couple of things at once. Okay. Uh, so one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm also curious about is you had mentioned uh, uh, about working, making works, and then, you know, you as the viewer, uh, you know, you, you could change your mind over time about what it is that you've made. Are you, when you're making your work, are you either aware of or thinking about your audiences aside from yourself when you're making your work or is the work are you the sole audience i'm not i'm not the sole audience i i don't think that i'm uh this gets me into trouble um th there is a thing there is a thing about artists creating art for uh themselves um to satisfy something within themselves and th that's that is very true for me um in as much as i think i mentioned if if i'm not working i get into trouble mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's basically it mm -hmm. but uh and I wrote this somewhere. My my work faces outward. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a great way to put it. You know, yeah. And I really so like it, that. It, it comes from here. Yeah. But I yearn. I yearn for an audience. I yearn for people to react to it. And my work has always been um, purposefully provocative on many levels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm hopefully elicit some sort of reaction not always good mm -hmm. not always good I well paint, that's good i paint clowns. i like that <laughs> I paint clowns. you know but there's a there's a um and and i'm a satirist mm -hmm. and there's a lot of social commentary and there's a lot of historical underpinnings mm -hmm. um and uh and not everybody it's it's not formal it's not cool mm -hmm. it's hot yeah and um a very long time ago when i was in school i thought i want to make paintings that people um can't just walk past mm -hmm. they yeah have yeah they i have that same them. desire i i want to make yeah. the most interesting thing in the room yeah 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 so yeah. this actually leads me to my last question, which is, uh, we just have a couple uh, minutes. Um, simple question, but it leads real well into what you were just mentioning. What does making art do for you? <laughs> I mean, I really just want to say it keeps me out of trouble. Um, Perfect. <laughs> It doesn't you know, need to be more than that. It's just, it's fascinating to hear 
all the different ways. It's the same, I ask this question of a lot of artists and, and you know, it, it keeps them sane or it keeps them out of trouble or it allows them to express themselves. And it kind of all means the same thing, but it's very, it's interesting about how different it can be. So, um, of course, now you've, well, I've spoken with you. I now have 20 more questions and I do see quite a bit of your work a little bit different. And I love the Superman reference. I, that, that really, that one did it for me. So, uh, Mitch, I want to thank you so much for coming by and talking with me today about your work. So fascinating. Um, and I also want to thank everybody else who came by to watch today. We really appreciate you not only watching, but of course, liking, sharing, and subscribing, which helps us uh, further uh, get more art shows. So we really appreciate you coming by today. And again, Mitch, thank you. It was really wonderful to talk to you today. Thank you. It was an honor, really. Thank you. Take care, everyone.